Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast Tinkercad 3D printable project. So let's get cracking. Friends, I am starting on my website, hlmodtech.com. I want to remind you that I've got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad, tons of awesome categories, also sweet beginner lessons, and then down at the bottom is a sweet built-in messaging button. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Now, of course, I'm highlighting that today because that's where today's suggestion comes from. Friends, today we're going to make a jewelry mount. Let me show you some steps. Friends, our goal is to try and make one of these. Let me show you what I got. Of course, friends, step one is to visit Tinkercad. I always choose sign in with Google, and then you're going to do a new 3D design. I've already got one started. This is where I did my test that I shared with Bill. Once again, there is an awesome tool called the collaborate button. I generated a link, copied that link, and Bill was actually in here, and we were bouncing notes back and forth using the sweet note tool. So friends, let me show you how we built this. The first thing I did was I brought out a tube. I'm making these large and we're gonna scale them down later for the actual jewelry. So I went to bevel and I wanted it to be round. I'm gonna give it a bevel of two. And then I took the segments and I changed that to 10. So that gave me the bottom of the shape. If we look back at our design, I'm trying to simulate that bottom. If we wanted it to have a slope, I can do that too, but I'll show you that after this initial one. So now, friends, I brought out the half sphere. I'm going to flip it with the mirror tool. I'm going to use shift scale to make it a little larger. I'm going to select these two and use the letter L, which is a line. I want the orange one to be the boss. I find that if we look at a corner, these make more sense. So I want the middle on the side. I want the middle to the front. And then I'm going to use control up to raise this up a couple clicks. And then I want to cut it out. I'm going to cut it out by doing control D. I'm going to make it a hole. I'm going to do control up to raise that up a couple clicks. I'm going to switch my snap grid to point one. And let's do shift squeeze to make it a little smaller. You can pick whatever amount you want. I am just adjusting to an area where I think it's going to work. I don't know for sure, but once I do control G, I can take a peek at it and see if I like it. Now, instead of raising this up, I'm actually going to take the orange one and I'm going to shrink it down just like that. One other thing I want to remember on the orange one is to take the sides and make it 64 so it's more smooth. So friends, now we need to cut in the fingers. I'm gonna do that with this awesome paraboloid. I'm gonna bring it out once again, we're gonna mirror it. I've got the steps as far as it'll go, so you'll notice they're not super smooth, but these are so small, I don't think that's really gonna matter. I'm gonna shift squeeze it to get it to some funky size. I don't have an exact measurement, I'm just having fun. I'm gonna bring this over to this side, to find my cutting area, I am using guess and check. I don't know what the perfect numbers are. I do know that I'm gonna do control D and I'm gonna just move the other one across. Notice I'm still on point one nudge, so I'm doing shift nudge to make it move faster. That goes 10 times as far. And then whenever I'm happy, which I don't really know, I'm just using guess and check, I'm gonna select those two and I'm gonna make them a group. I'm going to turn them into a hole and now I'm going to do control D and then I'm going to rotate 45 degrees. Now, if I do shift rotate 45 degrees is simply one click. It's that easy. Then let go and do control D again and again. And it memorizes that rotation and our steps are in place for cutting. Friends, are you ready for this? I am going to do a selection like this. So I don't grab the orange one. And if we hit group, we have just made a pretty darn sweet crown head ring collet. How cool is that? Now you can stretch, twist, adjust, whatever you want as you try and make this perfect. But that, my friends, is the technique I came up with. You can see here now I keep adjusting it and coming up with different ones. That's what you do is just play and see if you can come up with the technique you think is coolest.
One thing I do want to share is I never delete anything. I just do control D, move it across, and then start adjusting as I make it different. So watch this. I am just going to grab those top holes. I'm going to take them and I'm going to move them a little up. And when I click somewhere else, it regroups. And bingo, a little bit different version. This time, each of the tines are a little bit thicker. Friends, this one on the left has a groove in it, and the one on the right has some cutouts, and you'll notice that these both have six instead of eight. Let me quickly show you ways to make those happen. The first thing I'm gonna do is ungroup this one, and I'm gonna delete all but the first chunk. So there's a delete, a delete, and a delete. So friends, to make it so it has six times, we're just gonna change that rotation. Control D, rotate, and I'm gonna rotate to any number, but then I'm gonna type negative 60 in the box. And then if I do Control D again, they snap to that side. Now notice they are gonna be a little bit larger because of this. So I'm gonna take all of those and I'm gonna lower them down so I'm cutting out more. Now let's group it and see how it looks. Control G, bingo, we have got six. Once again, we still could make those bigger, but you can see that is the idea. Now let me show you how to cut out the grooves. Now this is a little trickier. I want this to be exactly straight with one of these grid lines. So I'm rotating it just like that. So now I've got those directly across from each other. I am gonna simply cut mine in with this little shape. You could cut them in with any shape as you were experimenting. This just makes it quick for me. I'm gonna press D to drop. I'm gonna squeeze it to whatever measurements I want, make it so it's a little bit pudgier, and I'm gonna turn it into a hole. I'm gonna bring this over to the shape, lift it up so it's cutting in, I can't cut all the way through. You can see that would be a problem. So actually this is not thick enough for what I wanna do right now. So I'm gonna quickly ungroup and then I'm gonna double click the pink group and I wanna take this inside shape and make it a little smaller. So notice I'm editing. I've got my point one on. I'm gonna hold down shift and make that hole so it's smaller. Now when I click out here, that piece regroups. I'm gonna hide this hole because I wanna group it in a minute and I'm gonna regroup my collet. I'm gonna use Control D. You could also just click on the group button. Notice now we've got more material to play with. I'm gonna do show all to bring back this little wedge. I'm gonna click on that shape and nudge it in. Notice the gray is where it's gonna cut out and I'm trying to get it in the middle, do control D, shift move it straight across. This is why we lined it up, was so that it was easy to shift move straight across. I'm gonna nudge this back in and get it sort of close. I think that's gonna be pretty decent, but watch how we line it up. Shift select and group those two pieces. Shift select the pink and choose a line we want to make sure it's to the middle and to the middle. That way we're cutting out the same amount on each side. Now you'll notice we missed a little bit, so we're going to use our eyeball to nudge that to perfect. I think that looks pretty cool. Now friends, it is Control D, rotate, and we already know the number is negative 60. Notice it lines up pretty close. I'm going to just do Control D and let's manually fix that. I'm gonna just use the arrow keys to nudge it to where I think is perfect. Once again, click, click, and bingo. Get it so we think it's gonna be pretty cool. Once you've got it lined up where you're happy, you can do Control G and make your new extra fancy ring collet. How cool is that? Before we wrap up, friends, notice how these stay sloped the whole way on the crown. Let me show you how quickly we can switch to that. So once again, I'm just going to grab any one of these. I'm going to pick this one and do Control D. Notice I never wreck what I've already built. I always start again. If we do this, boom, you're already close. We could actually just stretch it, push it down. 
Now I do want to trim off the bottom. I'm going to hit D to drop. I'm going to bring out the whole cylinder. You could use any hole and I'm just going to cut this. Notice I'm going to select them both, press the letter L, make the green one the boss and I want it centered and centered. And now if we group those, control G, we have got that crown shape we saw a minute ago. Of course, for 3D printing, let's hit D to drop. I like to click settings and shut off the grid once I'm done, just because I think it gives a better view of our awesome Tinkercad ring collets. Alrighty, friends, so hopefully you find that useful. I am a Tinkercad designer, not a ring designer. So if I have made a mistake in these designs, feel free to let me know in the comments. Bill mentioned that he actually makes these with something called Lost Wax casting and then makes them out of silver i have never seen that process so i'm really interested to hear if this actually works with his real silver projects friends don't forget if you found this video useful please give it a like please also hit that share button so more people can learn about hl mod tech don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below and if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and last but not least Hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.